What a game that was. Seven goal thriller. Should have been more. Uh, VAR was definitely at the forefront of this game. Uh, a little bit of, I don't know, just silly rules to be honest. I don't really blame VAR. I just blame the rule book. Uh, it, it's a bit absurd, but regardless, I'm not going to start this with a damp now. What a performance that was. What a game. And if you're a neutral fan as well, surely you enjoyed that one. 5-2, uh, unbelievable. Again, could have been a lot more goals in the game. But yeah, the first chance came to Bournemouth, um, and it was a it was a sloppy piece of defending. We couldn't get it out, and then uh, obviously uh, was it Stanislas who scored? I think it was. But yeah, he put the ball through Maguire's legs, um, and then ran the post from like a yard uh, from the touchline. So it, it was a good goal, just well for Bournemouth anyway. But but for us, it was another comical error. But that's something that's good, not the error, the fact that even with. A calamitous error and I mean the second goal was another calamitous defensive error we've still absolutely demolished the opponent at the start of the season that would not have happened at all we would have struggled we probably would have went on to lose and yeah that would have been that all because of a stupid defensive error but we didn't let that um, bring us down and yeah Greenwood manages to it is Greenwood who scored the first one isn't it yeah manages to get a goal a, a brilliant finish uh, just a brilliant finish uh, the the ball in from Fernandez is uh, brilliant just perfectly weighted for Greenwood to smash it. Um, Ramsdale gets a head to it, a head to it, a hand to it, and uh, yeah, it's, he can't quite uh, tip it over the bar, and thankfully it goes into the net. And yeah, that's uh, at the time was Greenwood's 14th of the season, 13th, 14th, something like that. Um, but yeah, uh, shortly after we we get the second, um, and I'm just trying to formulate which one was next because it was so high paced. Just so many goals and so many opportunities as well. So the next goal, oh, it was the penalty. Uh, it was a handball. You know, he's, he's batted it away, the defender, with his arm. No real complaints there, I don't think, from Bournemouth fans or anyone really. It's a handball. Uh, Rashford steps up. What I like about this is Bruno Fernandes had a little conversation with Rashford and told him to take it because uh, obviously Bruno's been on penalty taker. Uh, penalty. My God, I can't even speak. Penalty taker recently. And uh, yeah, he gave it to Rashford to give him a confidence boost and he scored. Um, so yeah, that was great. And then straight after, well, okay, not straight after, but just before the half-time whistle, uh, Martial with a beautiful finesse. This will be a goal of the month contender. Not necessarily goal of the month. You never know what's going to be. Um, struck but perfect placement there. Finesse it from just outside the box to curl straight in. In off the bar in the top right-hand corner to give us a 3-1 lead before half-time. And then we were able to take a breather and we brought Bailly on for Lindelof. I'm not entirely sure if it was an injury or just a rest or uh, Ollie wasn't happy. I I'm not really sure. I didn't watch the half-time analysis. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I probably should have checked on Twitter. But I'm guessing it was just to give Bailly some game time. Correct me if I'm wrong. But, yeah, he, he, <laughs> he comes on and within the first minute, Bournemouth hit the post and then... An absurd decision by VAR, in my opinion. It doesn't really matter because the match is won. So, you know, it's probably good that we got a decision like this against us. Because um, it goes to show that they do fall against us, regardless of what people think. Um, but yeah, by it looks as though he's outside the box. I know the rule book says the ball, if it's on the line, it's inside. But part of the ball is out the box. I, I, I just don't get it. I really don't get it. I didn't think it was in the box. But hey-ho, it's given us in the box and he shouldered it because of the new stupid, ridiculous rule that says anywhere here is a handball. Even hitting it there, which is what Bailly did, if you look at the full replay, if you freeze frame, it looks as though he's hit it about there. But on the actual replay, it's quite clearly that he's cushioned it there. But anyhow, it's given a penalty and um, I can't remember who took it for Bournemouth, to be honest. Um... I don't know, but they scored, uh, they made it 3-2, and then shortly after they had a goal ruled out for offside. It was about, well, it was offside to be fair, it wasn't a one that VAR had to like get the measuring tape out. It was, you know, maybe a yard offside, so it was quite clear. Um, and then straight after that, to calm our nerves, because we'd started the second half really, really poorly. Uh, the ball's played into Greenwood, and it's a phenomenal shot. Again, kind of the same as his last goal, just the other side of the box. This is what's so good about Greenwood. He's 18, he's now scored, I think it's 14 in all competitions. He's now scored more than Wayne Rooney did in his first season for Everton in the Premier League. I think he scored six. 
Greenwood now has eight, I believe, in the in the Premier League. It's just ridiculous for an 18-year-old who hasn't started too many games. He's played a lot because he's came on as a sub for the last 30 minutes, the last 20 minutes. But it's only really since the lockdown that he's been a key uh, player and a mainstay in the first team. So, yeah, he's got a, such a bright future. But, yeah, that made it 4-2. And then shortly after, Bruno Fernandes gets a free kick, and it, it's just beautiful. It really is. It's a beautiful free kick into the left-hand side of the goal. Maybe Ramsdale could have done better, but, you know, uh, it's just immaculate. Four different goal scorers. Um, we had a handful of other chances. Uh, Ramsdale made some good saves. Um, there was an offside goal just after the fifth one. Literally, like, a fraction. Fraction offside. Uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, we're 5-2 up anyway, so, you know, it doesn't really matter. But, yeah, it was a nice ball from Aaron Wan-Bissaka to play it into Rashford, uh, who did score, but, again, it was offside. Um, we had late uh, chances. Uh, Agarlo, uh, lovely ball from Bruno Fernandes. Agarlo uh, kind of dinks it over the keeper a bit, but it goes wide. Uh, Pogba had a free kick that was well saved by Ramsdale. Um who else? Uh, we had a, a shot in the first half, a free kick from Rashford that was well saved by Ramsdale. Pogba had a shot. Uh, no, was it Pogba? No, it was Fred right at the end uh, of the game. Again, Ramsdale with a fingertip save. So it was dominant. And five goals didn't really flatter us, to be honest, with our performance. I think we had 12 shots on target, something like that. And it was just dominant. It really was. Despite two horrific defensive errors... Um, and just the, the rule book for football needs a little bit of adjusting with the handball rule and a bunch of other shit but you know with all this shit going on we still obliterated Bournemouth and I know that what are they 17th at the minute 16th so it, it's not great if you look at it in terms of the table but earlier in the season and particularly over the last few years we've really struggled against this kind of team when they sit back but now we have the key and it's... <laughs> It is Bruno Fernandes since he's came. He is the key, but it, it's not just him. He's improved the performance of the players around him, which is key. We have so many creative players, so many players that can come on and score. Mata came on late on, played lovely one-twos, um, could have had an assist, could have had a goal. Agarlo came on, should have had a goal. You know, we've got, we've got options. It's nice. And we still need a couple of players, of course. We're now 16 games unbeaten. And I love what Oli said this morning before the game. He was saying that even though we're 15 games unbeaten, uh, well, this was in the papers. I, I would imagine it is true, though. He, he was saying he doesn't work, like he's not getting complacent. He's drilled it into the players not to, you know, use this as a, a thing. Oh, we're going to do much better, or whatever. We need to keep our focus. And he's went to Ed Woodward. Don't use this as a example of us, uh, you know, being back or whatever. We need more. We need to improve. And that's the right mentality to have because although we're on a 16 game unbeaten streak, we need to add to it, we need to improve and we need to make sure that we're going to win big trophies over the next few years because instead of coming in top four, which will be brilliant, we're fourth at the minute until Chelsea play Watford later. Uh, Leicester won 2-0 so I think they're still three points ahead of us. But we, we do, we, we, we don't want to be competing for top four, we want to be competing for the Premier League, for the Champions League, for every single trophy. So yeah, hopefully we can end this season on a high get a couple of players in and really, really challenge for the big trophies next year. And, of course, we need to qualify for the Champions League first, but I, I have no doubts we're going to do that. I really do. You know, we'll either come above Chelsea or Leicester or both. We'll get top four. And then even regardless of that, we've still got City's appeal, which might not come through. I think that'll get reduced to one year. So that would mean fifth would uh, get Champions League. But on top of that... You've got Europa League being played straight after the Premier League. So numerous routes in. We're going to take at least one of them. So, yeah, we'll get Champions League football next year. And we'll bring in some players. And, yeah, we will really compete. But what a, uh, what a performance. And just, it's nice being happy about United again.